Welcome to A Canadian Investing in the U.S., a podcast and YouTube channel focused on Canadians buying real estate with host Glenn Sutherland. Welcome to another episode of Canadian Investing in the U.S. This week, my guest is Jennifer Ward. Uh, So Jennifer, tell us a bit about uh, yourself, who you are everything else. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks so much for having me on. Um, so impromptu as well. I'm glad we got to make this work. Um, so um, my name's Jennifer and I am a long distance investor as well. I live in Denver and invest in Indianapolis. Uh, and so we've been investing in, in Indianapolis for about three years or so um, and have up to five doors right now. So just kind of growing slowly. Slowly. Certainly this last year has kind of put a wrench in our growth um, since my husband got furloughed and I turned a stay-at-home mom um, a year and eight or 18 months ago, oh, <laughs> to <nice>. be exact. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, so right now we're just trying to regroup and see how we can keep going um, with our investing goals. So yeah, I met Jennifer because she runs a Facebook group. Yeah. literally on this exact topic. Yes. So address that briefly and we'll move. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, I've got so many things going on right now and that should be on the top of this topic. Um, yes. Yeah. So thanks for bringing that up. I do. I did, or I do have a Facebook group called long distance real estate investors. Um, and the the whole group just kind of came out came up serendipity for me um i i first um joined a group in denver through meetup.com uh for people wanting to invest out of state and um there wasn't anything going on and one day meetup did an announcement to the group members saying hi the you know the leader of this group has stepped down anybody want to fill in and i was like well i really want to learn about this topic because uh denver is too expensive so i raised my hand and joined uh, or assigned myself as the leader for that group and i just was thinking all right i'll just bring in you know try to get guest speakers talking about different markets that they're investing in and and elaborating on the details of those markets and then when the pandemic hit, um, I had to regroup the group. <laughs> and so I converted it to a Facebook group. So it's only been about a year uh, that it's been as a Facebook group, which has been the best um, you know, way to go about it, just because I'm able to now promote and bring in people from all over the world technically yeah. um primarily you know i would say it's the us uh, yeah. maybe some canadians there yeah. <laughs> sprinkled in yeah. um i know i have some folks from israel as well as part of the group um so it's been awesome. Uh, you know, I still try to each month have a different market um, shared uh, from an investor and, and or a professional in the mar- that lives in the market, works in the market. So, you know, getting um, the, the lowdown from people with boots on the ground. So, and I'm hoping to, you know, I've been doing it once a month, but I'm trying to do it more often now because there's so many markets. (laughs) So (laughs) so many markets. (laughs) So you're doing the Facebook group and you're doing a week or a monthly, uh, basically, I mean, a monthly show talking about uh, a market and it grows and grows. And now you're doing a conference. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> kind of crazy. I never expected I would be doing that either. Um, so, just through online networking, Facebook networking, um, I'm part of this group, uh, Choose FI Real Estate. Uh, so, if anybody likes to follow the FIRE movement, financial independence, retire early, or FI, financial independence, and loves real estate. Um, Choose FI Real Estate, I found really helpful uh, just to connect with like-minded folks. Um, and so through that, I met uh, Kim Kasterki, who has her own Facebook group called the W2 Landlords. And um, and she's actually the mastermind behind this upcoming symposium. Uh, she approached me saying, hey, you know, we both have these communities that we uh, lead, you know, yeah. um, what do you think about pulling together our resources and contacts and all the experts we've met within our communities to provide, um, you know, like a two-day event 
to people to learn about different real estate topics. And so I thought it was a fun idea. I was like, yeah, what, what do I have better to do? You know, just running, chasing a toddler now and <laughs> trying to build up our real estate portfolio. Yeah, why not? Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we, uh, over the last several months, um, have been really grinding it out, planning out this symposium, and we're thankful to have you, Glenn, on it, uh, talking yep. about long-distance real estate investing, because yep. <laughs> uh, the, the whole theme of it is different strategies for real estate investing. So what are some top strategies? So we have uh, somebody presenting about lease options, seller financing, sub twos, uh, flipping, you know, yep. traditional buy and hold. Um, let's see, I know we have nine topics, long distance investing, of course, and, um, oh, how to be a private lender, um, and I'm thinking, oh, and Burr, yep. uh, yeah, yeah, that popular Burr method, so. When does this yeah, event so happen? <laughs> What's that? When does the event happen? It's happening March 6th and 7th. So it's virtual. Okay. And um, we are selling tickets right now. It's live. So I'm happy to send you the link for that to share. Okay. Uh, but it's only $20 for nine classes, basically about top strategies from the experts like yourself, uh, making that strategy work and making it profitable and, and growing your real estate portfolio. So um, it's again happening March 6th and 7th on March 6th, we're going to have five of the classes on that day, and then conclude on Sunday with uh, four classes. So, um, and if people can't make it that day, uh, we have, we've, this has all been pre-recorded. So we have the recording available to people that they can purchase as well. Awesome. So, that's yeah, a great, that's a great value. <laughs> I, I think so. I mean, being the FI mind, I'm all about what's affordable. What, what can I get of great value, but still, but especially at a great price. And um, I would easily spend $20 to learn from, you know, technically we have 10 experts, um, yeah. but nine topics. So um, I, I hope it's people find a great value. I have just learning from each of you along the way about your strategy. Um, it's got me pumped for this year, for mm -hmm. sure. 2021 <laughs> is not going to be a Debbie Downer like 2020. <laughs> So we'll throw um, after this thing, send me the links, I'll throw it in the show notes and people can just like connect there to, to go find it. Um, let's talk about your story. Like um, a lot of people are going to go, well, it's Colorado. And then we're going into, you said Indy, right? Yeah. And so a lot of people are going to go, well, well, this is American America, but the, what, there's just a lot of similar strategies. Like we're the reason that she's doing it is she's in an expensive market. I'm sure there's some other, there may be some other ones, but like, yeah. that's what we're doing. Like um, we're in a market where our houses are so expensive and it's one of those things by going into the mm -hmm. Midwest or certain parts of the South, you can get some much better returns. Um, yeah. So w without stealing all of your thunder, just <laughs> tell us, tell us your story about that. Yeah. Well, thanks Glenn. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no, um, it, yeah, uh, definitely because I was looking for a more affordable market. So, you know, we moved to Denver about seven years ago now, um, and we moved into a live in flip. So I thought, okay, this is going to be our start. <laughs> yeah, it was. An, I've never did it again. I just have to say that it yeah. was six months living in a dingy basement using a three by three bathroom as our kitchen as well well um and having our refrigerator in the garage and then having the complete upstairs just ripped down to studs so and <laughs> and having drywall dust in our bed in our hair every day so i don't recommend it but it was good for the fine minded right um so anyways, we, you know, finally finished the, the live in flip and we initially thought, oh, okay, let's sell it now. I'm going to be the next HGTV star yeah. and I'm going to go out through Denver and just be flipping all over the place. Yeah. And, um, well, I had a, a big wake up call. So I learned then that 
Denver is a hot, hot market. Um, and it still is. So this was six, seven years ago, um, and it's still a really hot competitive market. And so I went out there, you know, got a realtor. I didn't know about bigger pockets at the time and um, honestly didn't have a whole lot of education. I, I did grow up with um, parents involved in real estate. My dad was a home builder um, and my mom uh, later in her life, she became a realtor. And so you know, I've been around it. Uh, they had rental properties growing up off and on. Yeah. So I wasn't afraid of it. I felt like I had enough exposure, but I really still just didn't have all the proper education to, to make a, a good decision at that time. I just kind of went on a whim. And so anyways, I definitely had the rude awakening that I was not going to be acquiring properties in Denver like I thought I was. Um, you know, properties would be listed and then you had 30 offers coming in same day, you know, and houses, especially if they're like a fixer upper going, mm -hmm. you know, well, 30,000 to I would say 60,000 over asking price. Um, and then I was competing with these people who were able to pay, pay with cash. I, I was not in that position. Yeah. So um, I was like, all right, I've got to figure something else out. Um, so then after I learned about bigger pockets, um, I then heard about David Green and his yep. book about investing long distance. And I read that and then the light bulb went off and I was like, well, we should be able to do this, you know, anywhere. Um, and actually, you know, we ended up uh, with that live and flip, we ended up um, renting it out. So we found a our next house to live in, so our next primary house, we moved into that and we rented out uh, our flip. Um, Why did because, you decide to rent the flip out rather than flip? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good question. Yeah, so when we uh, decided to do that, we were learning about you know the market in the area, and we heard that rent in Denver, like it was hard to find rentals, especially yep. you know single family homes um and that we could get a really good rate and we did um we had a unicorn situation we got it rented you know almost immediately because it was just newly rehabbed um and we and we also wanted we thought to keep on we wanted to keep it for a little longer so it would appreciate even more right yep. Yep. Uh, because Denver was just appreciating like crazy. So we thought, well, let's just keep it for a few years longer if we can. Um, but we had a unicorn renter who their dad paid two weeks early every month. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So, and they, and he ended up staying in it for almost three years. Um, nice. Yeah. But um, so it was around that time that we made the decision to start investing long distance and uh, we ended up actually selling our primary house, moving back into that live in flip, the once was rental. Uh, we house hack it now. We ha have a tenant in our basement covering at least 90% of our housing expense. Um, you know, we probably could get it to 100% um, by, uh, by the time she moves out. Um, but the reason why, another reason why I decided to invest long distance was not only for the cash flow and just the affordability of another market, was because when we did have our rental, um, you know, when we were the managers. And I insisted on us managing it rather than hiring a manager, which we could have, right? Yeah. Because, you know, A, I wanted to save up money. And B, I'm just of the mentality, like, if I can do something, I'm going to do it. Um, it's really hard for me to hire out. <laughs> um, and that just kind of got tiring after a while. So you could say we became tired landlords. Um, and so that was another drive to invest long distance. I knew if I invested further, far away enough, I'd have to rely on people to help me out with our with our properties i would have to hire a property manager i mean i say have to yep. you don't technically have to right but it in my opinion at the time with our experience level i felt like that was the responsible thing to do so i knew by going far enough long distance we would have to 
set put in a system in place have a team to support us which in the end makes us more efficient investors so that way i'm not spending my valuable time unclogging the toilet right yeah. <laughs> the just classic example yeah. i'm spending my time looking at deals investing networking you know making our portfolio grow so so you, so you get to the point you're like okay Colorado's going to be tough to do this. Probably still yeah. doable. I'm still probably lots of people do it, but it's going to be yeah. tougher. So let's take right. some the easier hanging fruit. Let's take some of the stuff off our plate and we're going to do this uh, somewhere else. So why choose Indy, first of all? Yeah. So um, probably like a lot of us who've decided to go long distance, like it initially, it's such an overwhelming thought because you're like, well, where do I put the pin in? You know, where do I invest? <laughs> There's this whole world. And, you know, in the U S you're just like, it's massive. Like, where do I go? Yeah. Um, so I eventually put together this spreadsheet, um, of comparing different variables. So I probably have about, uh, if I can remember like eight or so variables, and I'm happy to share this as well, uh, a snapshot of my spreadsheet. I can like set, work it out with a link or something. Um, so anyways, sure, I yeah, send it afterwards and I'll put it, uh, if people are watching it on YouTube, I'll flash it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Appreciate that. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and so I, um, so I thought about all the different variables that you should consider through my education of learning about real estate. And then I pulled in different cities that I would hear a lot of people mention on the forums, on the blogs, on podcasts about cash flowing markets to invest. So I made a list, I think it was initially um, Cleveland, Atlanta, Indianapolis, Memphis, um, Kansas City, because that was popular for folks in Denver. Um, and I think I uh, later on threw Albuquerque in there because um, it was also kind of close if yeah. I wanted to, you yeah, know, yeah. have that option. Yeah. Yeah, and then I took all my variables of, um, you know, the rent to own, or I'm sorry, the rent to value of the home value. So um, income to home value or income to rent. So, and home value, like, is it affordable for people? Is the rent in that market affordable? You know, um, if something were to happen, like, I don't know, a pandemic, could <laughs> people still pull up their bootstraps and make the rent work? Um, and then, of course, insurance to home value, taxes to home value, um, population growth, um, appreciation. But, you know, I didn't make that a deciding factor at all. It's just I, I wanted to make sure I wasn't going into a depreciating market, yes. you know, but if it was steady didn't appreciate much that's that's fine with me um and then crime so i think that if i'm trying to look at my think of my chart in my head but i think that was all yeah. the ones so then i just kind of used various websites to pull this data and made it into ratios and and then <laughs> i sound like a, a nerd right now no, but <laughs> no. I, I have an episode where i did the exact same thing yeah <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, I, I, I never knew I was like a spreadsheet person until I got into real estate. Um, and so then I just kind of looked at all of it. And why I decided on Indy or Indianapolis was because it was generally the top two of the top two for every uh, variable, right? Okay. Like I would see some of the cities who were the best in one, like for example, Cleveland had, I think it was like one of the best ones for rent to home value, but it was the worst with taxes to home value. And, and so I ended up just kind of going with the flat line. Um, and that was Indianapolis. So nice. So now we got, we got our needle in, we go, and we're mm -hmm. going to Indy. So mm -hmm. do you buy the house? Do you go figure out your team? What did you do next? Yeah, I definitely wanted to figure out a team first before even thinking to look at houses. Um, so I ended up making a trip to Indy 
But before I did that, um, I, I didn't just like look at my calendar to see when I was available to decide when to travel there. I went online and I wanted to go when there was a time period in the, in the month where there's a lot of events happening with, to network with real estate investors. Ah. So, so I went on meetup.com and I went on Facebook and also just Google to find out all the different real estate investing groups in Indianapolis. And then once I kind of had a list, I went on each of their calendars to see yep. when they were having their meetings. And then whichever week it seemed like there was a, a good chunk of meetings happen is when I decided to go. So then, you know, I put them in my schedule. Uh, once I figured out what those dates were, I put those, those meetings in my schedule. And then I started contacting, networking with different real, uh, realtors, um, uh, property managers, um, investors, of course. Yeah. Um, I didn't do lenders just because There's I guess so many I, nationwide ones. Too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just thought, you know, I, I'm, that's something that you can do work with somebody from anywhere. Yeah. Um, and then also contractors, cause I wanted to pursue the Burr method. Yeah. Um, of course, a lot of contractors generally aren't open to just meeting with you, having a business meeting, unless you have a property, especially if it's your first time to talk to them. But there was a business in Indy that catered to out-of-state investors that did rehabs and project management. So they were open to meeting with me. So then around those real estate meeting or like the real estate investor association type meetings, yep. um, I then plugged in when I was going to meet with these other professionals. So it was, uh, it was three days and it was packed full. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Every time I go on one of those trips too, it's just, G -g 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 -g. You know, yeah, no, it's, intense. I don't, it's intense. I don't, I don't go for long enough. So it's like a, a like four days or three days or yeah. two days even sometimes. And you're just like right. packed in. Okay. So you then, okay. You got your team. You've done some interviewing. I'm guessing you got a lot of your contacts from other people. Cause that's usually the best way to get them better than Google or, you know, yeah. list or any of those things is not usually the best way to find people <laughs> no yeah i mean at the time i was using bigger pockets a lot um but today i i feel like i use facebook the groups on facebook way more now um i honestly yeah. i'm not on bigger pockets nearly as much as i used to be so I, i'm the same way <laughs> no, it, there's yeah. so much information so local and i don't know yeah it it, it works well um, so, okay, you got this all going. How did the first project go? You don't have to go into super detail, but like, yeah, you know, you're going through a new contractor, you're going through everything. Did it go as you hoped? Or was yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, relatively, I mean, of course, the rehab because I was doing a burr. Um, uh, the rehab part uh, went a little bit slower than I thought. Um, but you know, I, you know, once I put the pin in Indy, I you know, got the opinion of different realtors and property managers of what area of Indy to focus in. And I really wanted to make sure our first property, I got in one that had a, a good school district. Mm -hmm. um, and so with Indy, usually the um, Indianapolis school district, the ISD is not good at all, no, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so I looked a little bit more on the outlier. So as you know, from investing in Indy yourself, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a circle. You have 465 going all the way around Indy. Um, and so usually the closer you're to 465, if you're on the inner circle, and then of course with the outer circle is a lot of the townships, um, that's where you're going to have better school districts. So um, I, set up alerts with my realtor to focus on the west side of Indy because it did seem to have just a better, have more better areas, if, if that makes sense. It does. So, it does. When I first, first started too, I had the same sort of thing. Stay outside the circle. And um, there was certain, I got given some roads, you know, different between right. here and here is not good. And it was pretty general, um, but yeah. I really still, um, it's worked out, but um, honestly, the, the the where I put my first pin in, it yeah. 
it's still the shows up on the crime map. <laughs> it, it's, yeah. like, it's like, and it's weird with Indy. You can have like this nice big green area if you're like looking at a neighborhood scout or something. And right. there's like this spots inside of them. And yeah. I happen to dive right in, put a needle oh, right bummer. in those spots. But you know, it, it has actually worked out, but I haven't had That's that good. crime problem or nothing's been stolen from my property. Oh, that. Like that. So I, I, it, it worked yeah. out. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, um, Indy is where I learned that you put cages over your AC units, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> so. there's, there's a bunch of places to do that, yeah. but yes. Well, no, absolutely. But <laughs> I guess Denver is just in general, maybe a little bit of a safer city all yes. around than yeah. Indianapolis is. And I've never seen a, well, we don't have a whole lot of AC units, but if someone does, there's not a cage over it, that's for sure. <laughs> but there, it's either you put a chain or put a cage as soon as you get an AC unit, because yeah, it can happen. They're gone. Uh, but yeah, I the property I found was on the west side of Indy, uh, close to the Avon area. Mm -hmm. uh, so Avon is like, you know, another town outside of Indy, but close to it. So it's like a suburb um, that has really good schools and everything. And I just found this nice little neighborhood that it was inexpensive still but it butted up to a really a newer nicer neighborhood mm. you know so it it was taking it was able to kind of take advantage of the the newness and growth of that budding up neighborhood and the school district wasn't bad um you know i think it averaged out as a four or five so not great but it wasn't like a one you know yeah. where indy most of um isd is um and so i bought it uh, i think it was on the market for fifty five thousand. um it was a three bedroom one bath and this is three years ago yep. and we put um an offer under asking which <laughs> was like honestly <laughs> I, it, my realtor almost had to convince me to do this because i'm again coming from denver where you are expected to put offers over asking um, and so, you know, I was like, well, what do you think we should do? Like 60? And he's like, no, like 50. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> and so that was like a, a little learning experience for me, you know, don't that, I mean, it was a learning experience in that don't, you got to break your mentality from the market that you, you might've been accustomed to before and, and listen to the locals, you know? So uh, we got into, we got under contract, I forget for exactly what price, but we ended up closing at 44 uh, because there was some extra, um, I guess, uh, maintenance that needed oh, to be done that the inspection showed up. So we used the inspection, inspection to our favor and yep. got the price reduced further. So, um, and then I ended up putting 20,000 of rehab costs in it because we had some water mitigation in the crawl space. So that ate up a little bit more. And yeah, it was kind of a trial and error with some contractors. I had one contractor start doing the work and then um, decided to transition to another one. So probably the same song yeah. <laughs> a lot of people have <laughs> when working with contractors. Um, and then it, uh, once we got it finished, um, we got a tenant in for a thousand fifty a month. So it's my best property, I should say, still today yep. um, in Indy. And then uh, it refinanced for seventy five thousand. Um, so so that, that was the appraised value. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the appraised value was for seventy five thousand. So yeah. with leaving, you know we financed it for 75% of that. Um, so we ended up leaving about 8,000 into the property, which much better than leaving 65,000 in the property. Oh, oh definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it was a good one for sure. Um, still is. I, I, that's the one I get all the letters about, like, do you want to sell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. I, I think this was, this was a great episode. Well, no, <laughs> but no, this is a great episode. I, I think Thank we, you. We, we covered this um, and this is all about choosing a market, which is a, a really hot topic. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I do a presentation on it fairly frequently on how to analyze markets for people, you know, so I'm happy to share again, like my chart with my variables. And if anybody wants to reach out to me um, for the full presentation, I'm happy to just send them my PowerPoint or just have a conversation. Um, so my email is Jennifer at reimamas.com. Um, and but of course, they can find me on the Facebook group too, Long Distance Real Estate Investors. Yep. And I'm always happy to geek out about long distance investing. I, I, I think it's probably one of the best strategies, you know, out there because, you know, you, you, the world is your apple. And so as you, as you attest to go into a whole other country. So oh, yeah. that's pretty awesome. <laughs> oh yeah. The show's starting to go even farther now. We're starting like, I think we had one on, we just did one on Belize and did Scotland wow. and like people are getting braver and braver and it's, yeah, it's such exciting stories. It inspires me. I'm like, oh, yeah, I was farther. actually, <laughs> yeah, I was actually just talking to one of our other presenters on for the symposium yesterday who does lease options and they do also short term Airbnbs and um, they are talking to someone in Argentina about maybe doing one there. So <laughs> why not? Yeah. Right? <laughs> why yeah. not? Why awesome. not? So thanks for coming on the show so much. Well, thank um, I'll, you for having me. Yeah, I'll dump uh, the information in the show notes for everybody for the conference, for thank you. Uh, your contact information and anything else you share with me right afterwards, I'll dump that all in and people can track you down. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> happy to be tracked down. Anything to talk shop, that, that's good with me, so. Awesome, thanks so much, Jennifer. I do really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate you giving us this platform and um, all the knowledge that you're providing to our group. So thanks again. <laughs>